In this demonstration, we're going to see how to manage users and groups. What I'll do is go ahead and log in. I'm going to log in as the default user or the super user that is created uh, when you install the software, and that is superuser at ca.com, and the password is suser, S-U-S-E-R. I'll log in. Now, all of our administration topics will be happening here under the administration page here, and you can see user management is here. And when we go there, you can see that there's a list here for users and a list here for groups. And as you know, groups are simply collections of users. The thing to keep in mind about this is that regardless of the role that's given to a user, when that user is assigned to the group, they inherit the role of the group as well. But we'll see that in, in due course. The question becomes, what do we do with users? And so for what are the different reasons that we need users? Well, let's do a couple of things. Let's go to releases. As you've already seen, if I want to access the product at all, I've got to be able to log into it. So that's the reason number one. But why would I need to log in? What do I need to do? And the main reason is because of releases. As if I look at this release that I've started creating here, there's a number of different ways that people or groups are assigned in various capacities to a release. The number one way is here in what's called a stakeholder. So we can create a release and we can name the users and groups here who are involved with this particular release so that we have a kind of scoping here for all the interested stakeholders for what's happening with this one. The second way is by way of the various phases that happen in a release. And you can see here that I've, I have the super user assigned as someone who's involved with this particular phase. Let's go into the editor just for a second. And you can see that there are what are called owners for the phase. And I can add one or more of these. And it can be a combination of users and or groups. And I simply just have to go here and select the ones that are relevant. The same is true then for task as well. You can see that I've got this task called deploy to production. And the super user is the one right now assigned to that. Now I can just as easily go here and I have a couple of different things here. Notice that we have what are called owners here for this as well. So not only do they become responsible for this particular task and in a kind of visible way by this, but what also becomes true is that when this task goes pending or is in, in operation, there's another way to see the effect of assigning people and groups to these things, and that's through the dashboard. Notice that I have a widget on my dashboard that says my to-dos, and I can see a list of either pending tasks or pending phases. And so when I'm assigned or my group is assigned to one of these, it will be showing here in this dashboard page. So it makes it very easy to see the things that I'm involved with that are current in the system. All right, so these are some of the downstream effects then of being able to both log in and the ability to be assigned to various aspects of what's going on with releases. Now let's see how to do some of this. If I go to the user management page, you can see that I've already entered some users and groups here. The original one, as I said, that's created out of the box by the installation is super user. And that is the only original administrator login for the system. But likely you won't be using that. You want to create your own set of administrators. And so that's what I'm going to do here is to add a new user to be the administrator for the system. And that person's name is Jim Preeti. And his email address is going to be the way he logs in. Jim.preeti at forwardinc.com. 
and I'll need to set a password for Jim and I'll just use my uh, common one for now as user and give Jim a role and you can see that we have viewer designer and administrator and we've explained that a viewer is one who can only access and see things but not make any changes a designer is one who can make all kinds of changes except for administrative changes and the administrator actually can do all functions that are possible in this case we're making Jim an administrator so I'll set that and add that and now we've created Jim Preeti and I could log in as Jim now so let's do that I'm gonna log out as super user let's change this then to Jim Preeti at forwardinc.com and now I'm logged in as Jim Preeti and because he has administrative access he has all the same rights as the original super user does now the other thing that I want to do here is add an additional group and show you a couple of different ways to add people to the group you can see that I've got a dev team I've got a release team what I'm going to do is add a QA team let's add a group somewhat simpler in nature the name is QA team I could give it a description and now you can see under users here there's a drop down for adding users to this team there's actually going to be two users one of those will be cat here cat Taylor and I'll add the other one another way and because I want people who are in this group to be able to set the status of task they have to be at least a designer role so I'll do that and so now we've got the QA team that has one user added to it now I could have added all the users if there had been two or ten wouldn't have mattered I could have done that all from the same screen there but let's say that I need to add an additional one I, I don't have to go back here I can simply come to this screen and say right uh, Coulter actually needs to be added to that team as well so I can come here and simply say which group does Coulter need to be added to well it's the QA team and that's all I need to do I'll save that and now you can see my QA team has two members so that's how we can add users and add groups and add users to groups mm -hmm.